So I got an email from David who's having some shoulder pain with, with bench presses. He's doing a lot of ITY exercises, face pulls, rubber band exercises for rotator cuff strengthening, and he's still having a lot of shoulder pain. So I thought it'd be a good idea to come into the purple room, get a bigger represent representative model of what's going on in the rib cage and the shoulder and the scapula. So we've enlisted the assistance of Alfred here, and we'll talk our way through what may be going on. A lot of the time, shoulder pain is the result of a loss of range of motion that's associated with the inability to change the shape of the rib cage or change the position of the scapula as the arm moves through its arc of range of motion. So especially with compressive exercises like pressing, the exercise itself is going to promote a restriction in ranges of motion. If this is the case, then we need to make sure that we're doing enough work to maintain our ability to expand the thorax in the appropriate manner to allow us to maintain as much shoulder range of motion as possible so we avoid the painful ranges of motion. So let's talk about how the shoulder actually moves through its range of motion and where we would expect to see this expansion and compressive strategy that allows us to move the arm through space. In the initial phase of raising my arm up away from my side, I need to make sure that I get expansion in this posterior lower aspect of the rib cage. This prevents the scapula from compressing against the rib cage too soon or moving too soon, and I immediately lose range of motion under those circumstances. So maintaining this expansion in the posterior lower rib cage makes sure that I start from a good position. As I move the arm through this middle range of motion from about plus or minus 30 degrees from the horizontal, this is where the scapula actually moves the most. So this is what most people would term upward rotation of the scapula. And this promotes a compressive strategy in the upper back. This also pushes air forward and promotes an upward pump handle position of the sternum as I move the arm through this middle arc of range of motion. As I get to the top of an overhead reach, I need to expand again on this posterior aspect of the upper part of the rib cage. And if I can't do that, then I immediately have a deficit in my overhead reach. So what David's doing is a number of exercises that promote a lot of compressive strategy on the upper back, which is perfectly fine if that's what is needed. However, if he's promoting compression below the level of the scapula, what you've already started to do is taken away the ability to externally rotate the shoulder, and I'm beginning my my upward reach in an internally rotated position. If that's the case, then as I pass through this middle arc where I should acquire internal rotation, I'm starting from internal rotation, and then that can promote compression within the shoulder joint that gets uncomfortable. This may be why doing activities that are creating more and more compression in this posterior upper back area are not helpful and actually may be detrimental to the solution. So from a solution standpoint, what we want to make sure is that we get expansion in the posterior lower part of the rib cage. We want to then promote the compressive strategy in the upper back once we have this intact so we can get the expansion on the front side as we pass through this middle range of motion. And then once again, we want to make sure that we get expansion in the upper back as we acquire our overhead reach. So David, based on your email, what I would do is I would back off a little bit on the amount of rowing that you're doing and amount of upper back work that you're doing with your eyes, T's, Y's, face pulls, etc., that are actually increasing the compressive strategy here. What it sounds like is you need to reacquire some of this posterior expansion to allow you to start from a better position before you go into your heavier pressing movements or active range of motion above shoulder level. So David, what I would do is I would spend more time working on expanding that posterior upper back and the posterior lower rib cage with activities such as this seated dorsal rostral expansion activity where I'm supinating, externally rotating the arms by pushing my hands apart, gently pushing down in the table and keeping my upper back expanded as I breathe in and fill that space in the upper back with air are the activities that I would probably try to emphasize more so than your eyes, T's and Y's which actually compress that. David, if you go to my YouTube channel or the Instagram page, you'll also find a number of exercises that can be easily modified to help you maintain the expansive strategies that you're going to need to help maintain your shoulder range of motion and keep training. 
So David, thank you for your question. I think it's a really good question because I think a lot of people are also dealing with this. It's not that eyes, T's, Y's, face pulls, rows are bad exercises. We just have to be a little bit more selective as to when we're implementing these exercises and have good reasoning behind them as a strategy to help us stay healthy and train. So I hope everybody has a great Monday. I will see you guys tomorrow.